can talk about jigs on a leg day. In our series of making some better cornhole boards, Scott covered how to make cornhole board legs. It involves putting a cornhole board onto your workbench, attaching a leg blank to that cornhole board, raising that cornhole board to 12 inches off your bench and swinging that leg blank out over the edge of your bench, marking where it meets your bench while the board is 12 inches off of it, and then cutting it, and you have yourself a cornhole board leg. It's called making legs the hard way, and we've all got to do it. But eventually your friends are gonna find out that you make cornhole boards and you're gonna have to make a lot more and suddenly you're gonna need an easier way to move forward. So we're gonna talk about batching legs. Let's just say I make a hundred legs at a time. These are all right legs and just a few of what I made. And I don't even have boards to put these on yet. But they're gonna fit, they're gonna work perfect and that's because I use a jig to reproduce a perfect leg. So let's talk about making a perfect leg. First, we get to go make a cornhole board leg the hard way again, which is fantastic, but we're gonna control a few things this time. First, the leg angle. We're gonna wanna start out by making that leg angle match a hard stop on your miter saw. That's gonna make it really easy to reproduce that perfect angle every single time. And that's easy. The next is the harder part. That's drilling a perfect hole. The hole needs to be straight, because if that bolt is slightly angled, it's gonna shift the leg and all of a sudden it's not flat on the ground anymore, and that kind of sucks. So a drill press is gonna help you make that perfectly straight, and then you're gonna to wanna to get that perfectly centered on your board. When it's perfectly centered on the board, that's gonna help it match up with your leg frame and not matter which is the front and the back. So that's gonna help you make legs independent of your cornhole boards. So what we need to do is reproduce that leg the hard way, so feel free to go back and watch that video, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make a jig to reproduce that leg. So a jig is just a device that helps you reproduce the same action over and over with very little effort required. And this is my leg jig. It's going to help me reproduce that perfect leg that we just took great pains in making the first time to ensure that we don't have to take as much effort to do it again. Now, coincidentally, when we made the perfect leg, we also made a perfect frame. So we want to reproduce this whole placement for both of these parts. So we took it all apart and now we're going to make a jig to reproduce these. So the jig is gonna have a couple reference distances to ensure that we put that hole in the right spot. So as we spoke about earlier, we want the hole to be centered. So that way, whether I'm making a right leg or a left leg, that hole's gonna be in the same spot. So it's gonna be very independent and this leg will fit every single frame, whether it's a right or a left, or it's a left and a right, we're all good to go. So what in the world am I talking about with reference distances? Well, this hole needs to be put in the exact right spot, not just in the center, but also it needs to be the right distance from the ground. So you're gonna reference off of the foot of the leg. So your leg hole puts the bolt in the same position. So your board is the right height off of the ground. On your frame, we're gonna reference from the back of the frame where your leg is gonna swing out and hit and ensure that the leg hole is the right distance and obviously, of course, centered. So we're gonna make this jig. The jig is quite simple, even though this one might look a little complicated. Basically, it's a piece of wood that you're gonna to mount to your drill press. You're gonna start out just by sliding your frame in. You're gonna lower your drill press to mark that spot, and you got your drill bit going into the hole. You're just gonna add a couple rails where they're just safely off to the side. These are gonna be reference points to where you can just scoot in your frame, and that way it's referencing off the back of the frame on the side so you're centering your hole and you're putting it the right distance from the back so i had these stops so why do i have the bolts couldn't you just reference off of these pieces of wood and you could so you can drill one hole however the whole purpose of this thing is so we can batch it out and make a ton at once with very little effort so whenever we're using a power tool like a drill press and the drill bit comes out sawdust is going to fall out onto your jig and as you slide your leg in that sawdust could gather between the board and the reference wall so then that's gonna actually just shift your board away and that hole's gonna go in a different spot and you got an imperfect leg, which is defeating the entire purpose of what we're trying to do. So I just use bolts. These are carriage bolts. It's kind of a special flat head bolt. It's gonna allow sawdust to just gather between the board and the reference wall and it won't impact the placement of this frame. So the idea behind this is quite simple. The drill press is already in here. We're just gonna 
then be able to move out the bolts to where they are flat up against the edge of the frame and you're all good to go. And then this is gonna be tightened up to where then you got that reference set. That one's quite simple. When the heck is this little thing? So we got these little side bolts, which is gonna position the leg so you can get that hole centered. However, you're gonna use a hand fill stop here to where you can just feel when the boards are flush and that's gonna get the distance right to this hole and you're good to go. So we just spoke about making your leg angle match a hard stop on your miter saw. What I meant by that was your miter saw will click at certain angles like 15 or 22 and a half degrees, which is what my leg set at. That's going to help me reproduce the exact same angle every single time. So what I do is I lower my saw at that angle. I'll lock that into place and slide my perfect leg up against it. And then I'm going to create a little stop that just has a little extra length because I like to round my leg. So I'm going to give myself just a hair more distance than I need. And I'm going to be able to reproduce this length and that angle over and over. So I'm going to unlock my saw, raise it up. I can throw a leg in there or two legs. Four. So now I've got four legs cut to approximately the right length at the exact right angle. Now let's go drill those holes. So a happy little side effect of drilling a hole through your leg is you're going to put a hole into your leg jig base. This kind of seems like a bummer. However, that hole is going to help you align this jig onto your drill press just by simply lining up the hole with the drill bit. It doesn't matter at what angle your jig's at because your stops are going to position the boards at the right angle and this drill press is going through this hole, which means your hole is going to be in the perfect spot. So then you would secure this jig to your drill press. Uh, if you don't have a dedicated drill press for this jig like I do, you might consider installing a bushing. A bushing is going to be a piece of metal with a very precise internal di diameter. It's going to match the diameter of your drill bit, and so that way it will not wear out over time. So that way it's going to be quite precise. So we can drill these legs by placing the leg in. You're going to slide up to the back. And as you can see, all the sawdust is not impacting the placement as it can slide up against these holes without any sort of obstruction. That's gonna center the bolt hole on the leg, and then you're going to use the little precise fill stop on the end to ensure that the leg is in the right spot. With the elevator bolts, I'm able to stack and do two legs at once. Feel for that placement, push up against the back, and drill that hole. Then we can slide in our frames. Our frame will slide in again up against the back holes and all the way to the end. Now in case there's any trolls out there right now zooming in and seeing this gap, you're gonna say, hey, this isn't very precise at all. However, my crooked bolt does still stop my leg at the exact same spot every single time. I'm still able to stack two frames, slide them in all the way to the end, push them all the way to the back, drill that hole. So now that we have our angle cut and our hole drilled, we got the exact right distance, the exact right angle. However, we just still have a squared end so we can't open that leg. You could just cut off the corners so that way it'll rotate open without hitting the board or you could get a little fancy. about this jig in a later video. And that's how you reproduce your perfect legs.